Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and uh, I'm working in Nordred again, I'm creating a small project now and I want to create a some simple rule engine and the inspiration came to me when you know I was making all these videos either on the Son of EV link or the Tuya application or well, basically any smart home application where you have this very simple sort of automation scene functionality where you can create a couple of conditions and if those conditions are met something gets done and the reason I want to do that because I have quite a few of these in my uh, in my node Reddit as well and for each of them, I created a small, you know, uh, compact function node, which, you know, does a, you know, basic programming of, you know, doing all these conditions. And I realized that I could do this in, if I create a more generic engine and I have a set of rules that it can just automatically go through, then I could combine all these, you know, small functionalities into one single one, which I guess it will be easier to manage. So this is what this video is about, because uh, I thought I'm going to make like a um, first brainstorm storming video uh, which I started and then I started you know putting some basics into node red and then after about like one and a half or two hours it was you know pretty much done I mean not done but the core of it is already working so that's what I'm going to summarize here and I guess this state machine is is an easy way to sort of program these how these values change and how to evaluate these rules because uh, uh, for example, in the washing machine case, I mean, you wouldn't need cases if you have like a lot, if you store the history of the data and you know, for example, if the, um, you know, the, uh, the power consumption was sort of low and then it goes high, then you know that it, it's the machine is, start, is uh, turning on. And if you have a history of, you can sort of tell how the uh, washing cycle looks like and all of a sudden it, it goes to zero. But um, I think programming wise probably is using these statuses and then defining these state tr status transitions uh, are just easier than you know storing a lot of data and working with a lot of data. So that's why I implemented this as well. So going back to a couple of weeks ago when I did my 10 most uh, useful Node Red projects, that's when I realized that I have so much of this functionality. So for example, um, well, I can think of three different uh, scenarios. So I have a, a piece of flow which is looking at the soil sensor in my plant and it just says that you know if the soil if the soil sensor indicates um, soil moisture below 10 then I need to water the plant and then after that it's it's looking for when the um, the soil goes back to or the moisture goes back goes above 30 as well and that's sort of indication that I just water the plant so it goes back up and these are typical like state machine uh, logics where you where you look at this value, where you look at a, a certain value in combination with a state. So obviously, if you just look for, you know, if the moisture gets below 10, then that logic will trigger every time you, uh, the, you know, the, uh, the moisture stays below 10. So you want to combine it with a state. And uh, I think they are called, this is why they are called state machines. So usually there is a condition for uh, there is a condition to go into either states and in these conditions you always combine the states. So if you can see it here that uh, if I consider the plants to be watered and at the same time the moisture gets below, goes below 10, then I flip the state to dry. But if it's in a dry state and if it goes above 30, then I flip the state back to watered. And I actually use the very same, uh, let me search for this, um, a very same concept where I determine if the washing is completed. So here again, I have an upper and a lower threshold. So let's say if the power consumption of the washing machine goes above uh, 1500, because it turns on the heating, then the washing started. And then when the washing is basically running, then I you know, look for when the consumption goes below two again, because that's when it stops and goes back to idle. And that's exactly the same state machine. And I think the, the third example is um, when I look at the, uh, the night sensor, sorry, light sensor, which is uh, outside the home. And then again, I try to determine based on those values, whether it's daytime or nighttime, so I can control the blinds. So these are 
actually fairly you know simple logic and this is what I wanted to combine in uh, in this automation engine so what I wanted is I that I can create a set of rules and those rules are evaluated based on um, uh, the data that are uh, received from various sensors and then um, you know the the rules must have multiple conditions so I can have uh, well in this case a sensor value greater than less than equal to uh, combined with the state and then on the action side we again do something so on the actions uh, uh, of course we can send you know turn the lights on we send a notification something like that but in order to incorporate the state machines what I wanted to do is instead of just um, you know comparing uh, very simple uh, states uh, sorry um, sensor values I can all also compare state values and then on the action side when I, I you know send a message out I can send a message out but I can also change the state as well which the state pretty much uh, acts like you know another sensor so it just has a name and it has a value so it doesn't really make a huge difference so actually these are the things that I have built so far and then this is what you can see here so let me change the view and um, so the whole flow is like that I mean this is the actual state machine and this is uh, uh, I just imported my status logging functionality that I did a video uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, so I can track what is happening because I had some bugs in the beginning and I couldn't really f figure out what was going wrong so I had to just log the hell out of these things because the JavaScript code is getting a little bit um, long and that was the only thing I could think of how I can debug this whole thing so what is happening here in a nutshell is that I have various sensor readings that are coming through here so you can see the uh, you know the power consumption for the washing machine the, um, this is for the soil sensor and also from the weather station that comes in and then it goes to this automation engine so all the logic is implemented in here so this runs through all the rules and then evaluates the conditions and then if the conditions are met then it executes all the statuses and then at the end something is sent out so based on the rules uh, that I defined it sends out messages and it only sends out messages if that you know if the conditions are met <clears throat> and the rest of it is just like yeah I mean this is just a test notification so at the moment it is still in test mode it's not really doing anything it just sends me notifications and um, it runs in parallel with my all the logic so if everything goes uh, according to plan and everything is working then I should be receiving notifications from this new flow and the old flow as well and so far it is working like that so I want to run it for a couple of more weeks just to make sure that it's uh, it's dialed in and this one is only for just uh, logging so I can see what is happening in the background so you can see the current values I can see you know a bunch of logs here and also some summary logs here as well and I have uh, I can I have settings to control this flow which is actually empty and empty at the moment and I also have some rules and of course um, I mean I have these ideas but I would be really interested to you know uh, to hear your take about uh, on this what I should include in here and uh, you know what other functionalities would be useful so I'm using it for these three different cases at the moment so let's look at well as i said the settings is empty so i haven't really done a lot of things in it that can be configured i think probably the first one is going to be the logging level because once it's uh, it is dialed in and the rules are working you don't really need all this uh, logging i just reset the log spot uh, there was like you know hundreds and hundreds of messages in here i mean still there are quite a few of them you can see and as usual everything is stored in a context and well this is the flow context at the moment so I have the rules which are defined here I have the settings which is empty at the moment and these two are the statuses that are uh, created by the you know the status logging flow which is done here uh, and then I have one other object which is the data cache so this contains everything that the automation engine collects so this uh, contains the current sensor values so the last values that were sent and it also contains the states as well 
So let's go through the rules uh, because as I said, uh, well, the settings is empty at the moment and I think probably the first thing I'm going to do is some sort of um, logging as in uh, you can define logging levels because once everything is working, I don't think we need all these different logs uh, and probably it's, it would be nice if I can turn this off and just uh, ease the load on the Node-RED. And uh, so the next one is going to be the rules. And I've taken the time to actually document how the rules work. So you can see it here. And also you can see it here as well. So that's uh, the full, well, sort of the full documentation. I still want to add some small details. But then the rules is just, uh, as usual, it's a big JSON, which then is gets stored in the context. And uh, it is in a big array, which contains all the different rules. And uh, for, so I'm, as I said, I'm using it for these three things, and all three of them are basically status machines with two distinct statuses. So there are six rules altogether. So one is that defines how, in what condition we go into the first state, and then what condition goes back to the to the well goes to the second state. So for the washing machine, I think I can take the washing machine example because then the rest is pretty much the same. So you. Uh, whenever you create a rule, so that's, uh, can I, no, I can't go full screen on this one. So one rule is actually this much here. So a rule has some, you know, a name and an operator, it has conditions and it has actions. So uh, very simple. So the name is, is just a human, human readable name for the condition sorry for the rule, uh, which uh, then gets printed on the log. So that's the only importance. And, and of course, the reason I'm putting all these names and everything into, uh, into here, because, well, at the moment, everything is in JSON, but maybe the, you know, the final version of this would be a UI where you can edit those rules in a UI, so you don't have to edit the JSON. But um, <clears throat> yeah, that, that's for the future. And you can define an operator. Uh, which says um, how to evaluate, evaluate the conditions, so whether all the conditions need to be met, which is an AND, or one of the conditions needs to be met, which is an OR. So at the moment it, it supports uh, AND or OR in capitals. And then we get to the conditions section, which itself is an array as well. And then for each of the uh, items in the condition is an object which looks like this. So it has an operand, operator, and a value. And then the operand says what um, uh, value to, to compare the, the current data to. And this value is actually what the system is looking up in a data cache. So normally, um, oops. Uh, <clears throat> so at this point, let me just go back because uh, I can show you how a test data looks like which you are sending in. So when you send data into the uh, automation engine, it has to be, it has to have the uh, sorry, a topic of data. And then in the payload, there is an object which says there is an ID and the name and the type and a value. So uh, the only thing which really matters is the, uh, the ID at the moment and the value. And then I use the rest again, because if I need to build a UI, it's good to have these extra attributes. And actually, this is what gets stored here. So let's say the ID could, it could be the, uh, the washing machine um, underscore par, and then I have a name, which is washing machine par or par consumption. And then it's a type number. So obviously it's a number um, value and there is the actual value, which is the, let's say the, the watts uh, the mach washing machine uses. So here in the rules, when I set a condition, oh, sorry, when I uh, define the operator, we, I am defining the ID, which is actually the name of the attributes as well, if you look at this object. But uh, yeah, and this can be, well, anything which is stored in the data cache. So this can be a name of uh, a sensor value that I feed in using that uh, data uh, topic, which I just explained, or it can be a name of the state, which again, the state is what the rule itself creates or updates, which we are going to see later on. So here, what I said is that I, if the, the sorry, the washing starts, if the washing machine power goes above 270, actually, based on the other document, it should be 1500. Not that it really makes a difference. 
So if the washing machine starts drawing more than 1500 watts, then I consider the washing to start. And, uh, and then, and I also, you know, I only care about this if the washing machine is in state idle. So if it was idle before. So that's the washing machine underscore state and equals idle. And in the operator, so far I programmed GT for greater than, EQ for equals or LT for less than. And the, in the value, you can, you know, uh, give a number or you can give for the states. I usually use a piece of string text so I can do, you can do that as well. And uh, so what the, um, the system would do is if it receives the data, which is washing machine power, then it knows that it needs to compare the current. If the current washing machine power is greater than 1500, then this condition will evaluate to true. And then it also checks this one as well. Uh, the washing machine state, which you can see washing machine state at the moment is idle. So then uh, that's when we would like to flip the status to, let's say, washing. So and this is what happens in the action. So uh, in the action, we can have, again, we support just a few things. Uh, so we support set, set state. So that's when you create or set a state. So the type is set state, and then you set the washing machine state. There is also a name, and then you set it to washing. So then, uh, and for the washing machine, I only care when it stops washing. So this is, there is nothing else here. We are just setting the state. So we know that we are in a washing state. So now we start looking for when the uh, power consumption drops again. And that's what the next rule does. So if the washing ends, uh, the washing end rule, uh, is looking for when the washing machine power is less than two, but then it also looks at that the washing machine state needs to be um, in, in washing. And if that happens, then we, set the, uh, then we set the status back to idle, and then we send out, so we, we have another action, which is type control, and it has a topic and a value, and that's basically the message which is going to be sent out from this function node. So that's what you can use to send a message, turn on a light, or do anything with that. So that comes off the uh, or comes out of this function node. And uh, I mean that's pretty much it. So you 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 always um, you in in a certain state you look at another condition, and if that condition is met along with the state, then you change the status. So this will not evaluate again because now the status is different. And of course, then you can do something, control something, turn on light. And probably the only other trick which I want to mention that uh, if you start this routine or if this whole thing starts up, then obviously you don't have a state, so you don't define an initial state. So what the code does, if, this, if it doesn't find a state, then it, it will evaluate this condition to true. So basically that will, that, that acts like a default state. So when you are uh, defining these uh, rules, you have to define them in such an order that uh, it's okay. Uh, well, the, the state that you check is the default state that, well, it's the default state that you expect to be, because then, you know, if the washing machine state is not found because let's say node red just restarted, then uh, it, then you check whether it's idle. If it doesn't exist, then it will say that this condition is true. So sort of you imply that the default state is idle. Uh, so that was the first two rules. And the next one is, uh, let me look at the plant, if the plant is dry and if it needs watering or not. So first I check if the soil moisture is less than 10 and, um, and I check this, um, in conjunction with if the plant is watered or has been watered in the past because the state is in, in uh, watered. <clears throat> and if that happens, I set the plant state to dry because well now we just dropped the moisture, well the moisture just dropped below 10% and I send the message plant dry and this is what I can use to send myself a message that the plants uh, need to be watered. <clears throat> and, and after that, 
if the state is dry and then the moisture goes above 30 then I set the status to watered and I send another message out and I just only use this message just to give me a feedback that the sensor is working and it picked up the fact that I just watered the plant and uh, so you know with this set state and control actions I could do these very simple state machines and I can you know control something send message something like that and uh, you know so far it is working I think I finished this code probably like two or three days ago so all this logic is running for two or two or three days in that day obviously we had a few daytime night times night time cycles so that's working my missus was doing washing and then the washing logic is working as well the plants probably need a couple of few uh, more days to um, you know for the soil to dry up and I get the the first notification from the soil sensor but uh, I think it's going to be just fine I mean based on the other two uh, this should be working uh, you know without any issues oh by the way did I update the f oh, yeah 1500 I did that <laughs> okay so as I said, the, uh, the data comes through here and then every time, so I created this link in node which I placed these two nodes on you know, some of my other flows. So every time uh, the data first goes into this uh, function node, we just prepares this special uh, payload and assess the topic to data uh, because otherwise it would get ignored by the automation engine. So it's really only looking for the uh, topic data and and nothing really else at the moment, I think. And if I go into here, uh, yeah, it just checks if the topic is data because if it's anything else, then it is pretty much is just going to ignore that. But what the code does is just uh, reads the settings, reads the rules, reads the data cache, and then it <clears throat> it checks what the data that we well whatever data is received that it also puts it into the data cache because that's the uh, that's the like the newest value from that sensor and then it starts uh, looking for the rules and uh, what I did is I go through all the rules and then um, I have this uh, thing which I don't really use a lot this is a really good um, method in JavaScript that you can um, give it an object and you can do a filter which basically says that um, go through all the um, attributes in that object and then look for an attribute which has a certain value so for example I um, I go through each rule and then I have this routine to check if any of the conditions the operand is the data that I've received because obviously if it's something else then well, I don't have new data, there is no point running those rules. So if the if any of the um, the data if the data type is used in any of those rules, those rules are going to be evaluated. And then it checks uh, uh, and it sets some values, but then it just basically loops through all the conditions. Um, and this is where I said that if the state doesn't exist, then that condition is automatically evaluated to true. Uh, because that is expected to be well this is regarded the first uh, sorry the initial state and then um, I have a big case based on the operator so if it's greater than then it checks the current data against the condition value uh, what I mentioned before if it's less than then it checks the current data against the condition value and if it's equals then it checks whether the current value or current data value is equal to the condition value and then every time this happens, it sets the statuses. So it sets the or condition to true, or it sets the end, or if it if it's not met, that it sets the end condition to false. And uh, obviously, if the operator was end, then I just check that the end condition is still true, or if it's uh, the operator set to or, then the or condition needs to be true in order for you know all the rules to pass. And if the rules passed, then I evaluate the actions. And obviously, if it doesn't pass, then um, then you know this section is not uh, not executed. And uh, again, I just have a big switch here based on the action type. So I have the set state and the control configured at the moment. And you can see here that if I if I use the control, then I send out a message where the topic is the topic and the payload is the value. 
so which, which you have defined in the action. And if it's a set state, then I set the state. And as I said, I put it into the data cache. And so it just acts like another sort of like a sensor. So it's not really complicated. I thought it's going to be a lot more complicated. But, um, you know, with these very few subset of actions and conditions, um, it's fairly compact. So I'm, I mean, if you look at this, uh, the whole thing is like 100 lines of JavaScript code. And that's pretty much it. So obviously I can, and it already has a lot of, uh, as you see, node status. So nodes, so everything, something happens and I put a node status and th that's why I said this is why I use it for debugging. So you can see all the sort of, and I also put these zeros, one, two, three, five, so I can just better identify where the, uh, which uh, line is actually in the code which uh, triggered the message. But you can see it goes through everything. So it checks all the conditions based on what data I got. Uh, it, it, it is going to tell you which rules it is checking. And then if it finds the rules which is applicable for the data that received, then it goes through the conditions and you can see which conditions evaluates to true. If the other one evaluates to false, then the whole condition is false because it was an end relationship. So yeah, it's working fine. And uh, yeah, so far so good. So that was pretty much the whole function node. And as I said, not really much is happening here. This is just uh, sends information for my Telegram flow so I can get the Telegram messages. But you can, you can see the outputs here in this debug node as well. Well, nothing really happened since I started recording, so you don't see anything here. And this is just, um, this piece here just prints the data cache. So if you look at the UI, you see the, um, all the status messages. You see these aggregate status messages as well. And so that, that was the that was the follow. So it, it prints the um, you know all the values. So you can see that the washing machine is uh, reporting no power consumption. So the status is idle. The outside temperature is three thousand something. Uh, so it is considered as daytime. And the moisture is now uh, is is nine. So actually it has turned to dry at some point. So I should be receiving this message. I mean obviously I'm thinking about how to go forward. I mean it still does what I need the, uh, the rule to do, or this automation engine to do, but probably I can just enhance this a little bit uh, further. So I think one would be have something in the settings where I can configure the log level, so I can just re reduce the amount of log which is created out of the back of this flow. And on the rules, I mean, obviously there are two ways where I can enhance this. One is, uh, to have more different conditions. So I was thinking maybe in some cases it would be nice to add a time condition. Um, so besides um, configuring uh, data, I can also maybe include time. So for example, I, I want my plant watering message to arrive in the evening when you know, I, I have time to water the plants instead of just a random time in the day or maybe at night where I wouldn't notice it. So maybe evaluating that condition with a time filter as well, that could be useful. And also on the actions, um, I'm not really sure if I would use that, but I remember Sonoff and Tuya also have delays. And um, maybe in some cases having a delay would be useful, um, like, you know, before doing something, then have a little bit of delay and then do something else. It would just make a little bit complicated to implement that delay within a function node. I don't, I'm not even sure if I can do an actual delay in JavaScript um, because, you know, the execution is happening per message. So I can just uh, certainly introduce a delay in the JavaScript that should not impact processing of any other messages. But, um, I've never done that before. So, because obviously if I needed to delay anything, then, you know, I would use a delay node such as this one, but then I would just need to come out of here, put in a delay and then come back again. It would be a little bit messy. So I think it would be nice if I can introduce the delay it's inside the, the function as well. But I think it should be possible. But uh, I think that would be all for now. And uh, I'm going to put the whole thing up on the um, on GitHub. So 
you will find the link in the video description to this flow and you know obviously it will get enhanced and you know once i feel confident that even this part is working then i will start replacing my existing small function nodes and basically just start processing the message which comes out of here and uh, you can use the topic to you know just create a big you know change node or sorry switch node then if the topic is this then you know send a message if the topic is that you know turn on a light or something like that uh, bring down the blinds that sort of stuff um, and so you know processing the output should be fairly easy as well but again i think that will be all for today thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video